So thank you all for joining us today. Um, I'm Emily, I'm the Marketing Events Coordinator at Meetup. Welcome to another Meetup Live event. Um, today we're joined by special guest, Catherine Lee. She is a Meetup organizer and founder of sweater, sweaterbabe.com. Um, she will walk us through steps for knitting a card pouch. You will hear how to avoid common knitting mistakes that beginners make and advice for, for finishing your projects you start so before we hand it off to her, we're just going to do some quick guidelines and the agenda. So for today, the, um, the event is recorded, but you will not appear in the video. You can only see us. We can't see you. There's also a mute courtesy. Um, your audio is muted, but we still want to hear from you. So please submit your questions in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, and we will get to them at the end of um, the presentation. Closed captioning is also available to turn it on. Just click on the live transcription icon at the bottom of your screen and select your preference from there. And just for today's quick agenda, we're gonna do a quick introduction right after this to Catherine, and then she will take it away with her knitting demo for 45 minutes. And we will come back at the end for a Q and A session for 10 minutes. So I will just give Catherine, a quick little introduction um, before she takes it away. So Catherine is the Southern based designer behind Sweater Babe Knitting Patterns. Ever since learning to knit and crochet when she was eight, she's been designing and knitting items from adorable baby cardigans to gorgeous lace shawls. Her designs have been published in multiple books and magazines, including her own crochet book, Sweater Babe Fabulous and Flirty Crochet. She has taught hundreds of knitters and sells her Sweater Babe PDF patterns through her website, sweaterbabe.com, and through her online yarn, yarn shops. Um, when Catherine is not knitting or playing pickleball, she is busy, a busy wife and mother of three daughters. So thank you so much, Catherine, for being here, and we cannot wait to learn how to knit from you. Great. Hello, everyone. And thank you, Emily, for that introduction. I'm really excited to share my knitting expertise with you all today. I have this little knit pouch that I will be sharing with you today. It's a great little pouch to hold business cards, gift cards, or credit cards. It's also a nice small knitting project so that I'll be able to demonstrate the basics of knitting for you. We're gonna start with this garter stitch version, which uses just the basic knit stitch. I'll show you how to get stitches on your needle, how to do the actual knitting, how to finish your knitting, and then how to assemble this pouch. And also, I will be adding lots of tips along the way, and I will touch on the techniques that will be needed for these three other pouches that I've designed. So this one is a stock knit stitch pouch. It involves also learning how to purl. This one is a cable, so I'll show you how to do a basic cable twist. And then here's a lace one. Now these three other ones are more suitable for knitters that have a little more experience, but the instructions for all four of these pouches will be included in a pattern PDF later on in this event. So whether you're a beginner or experienced knitter, I hope to share lots of great advice with you during our time together today. So let's get started. And first I'm going to move the camera so that you can see my table. Okay. One second while I just make sure this is stable. Okay. So Hopefully you guys saw what the materials were. And so we'll review what's needed to make this pouch. So first we start with the yarn. This is a worsted weight yarn. This is a pretty small project. So you only need about 20 yards of this yarn. And worsted weight is kind of a middle weight, middle thinness sort of yarn. It's not too thick and it's not too thin. So it's great for beginners. Then we're gonna need the needle size. Eight is suggested because it's a really good fit with this type of yarn. I prefer bamboo circular needles, but that's a personal preference. 
if you have straight needles that are size eight, so here's an example of straight needles. So these are, these are actually larger than eight, but this is your example of straight needles. These are bamboo as well. But if you have straight needles, if you have a longer circular needle, if you have metal needles like this, it's all good as long as you have size eight or pretty close to size eight, because that's what matches this yarn and that's what will work for us to make this garter stitch pouch. In addition, you're gonna need what's called a yarn tapestry needle. And that's basically a sewing needle, but it works with yarn. This is called a stitch marker, that's optional. It's a nice to have um, because I'll show you later, but it'd be good to mark which side is the right side of your work and the back side. And a stitch marker like this is good for that. You're gonna need some scissors and then you're gonna want a cute little button to close up your pouch. So I use this one. These run about, I don't know, three quarter to one inch in diameter. So that's a good size for this project. In addition, you're gonna need sewing needle and thread. You can see that on my pin cushion because that's how you're gonna attach the button when I show you how to do that at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna start by showing you how to cast on. So what I am gonna show you is called the long tail cast on. There are many different ways to cast on for knitting. I tend to use the long tail cast on for about 95% of the projects I use, partly because it allows me to make a really nice, neat looking cast on. There are other methods of casting on, but they don't, at least in my opinion, produce one that's as nice and neat looking and nice and rectangular in shape like this. So let me show you that. So in order to start any kind of knitting project, the first thing you need to do is make a slip knot. So here's your ball of yarn. I'm giving myself a little bit of yarn to show you how to do the slip knot. I'm right-handed, so the ball's gonna be on my right and I'm pulling the yarn off to my left. If you are left-handed, please feel free to flip everything that I'm doing. Okay, so this is how I do a slip knot. If you already know how to do it because you crochet or knit, just go ahead and do it the way you're doing. So this is how I do it. So I lay the yarn over the fingers of my left hand and wrap it like this. I wrap it around, excuse me, I need a little more yarn. I wrap it around once and then I drop it behind. Then you see there's kind of a big loop here. Stick your index finger and your thumb through there and use that to then grab the strand of yarn that is coming from the ball and then pull. You're pulling a loop through and with my left hand, I'm tightening the knot at the base. This is a slip knot. The reason it's called a slip knot is because you notice as you pull one end, you can slip the knot so it becomes big or small. So that will be your first stitch of your cast on. And I'm actually gonna undo it right now so that you can see me making it again. So there we go. So once again, how to do the slip knot. I lay it over my fingers of the left hand, wrap it around, let it drop in the back, curl my fingers towards me. And then through this loop, I'm gonna grab that strand of yarn. This is the strand that's coming from the ball, pull it and tighten. And that is a slip knot. Okay, so that's gonna be the first stitch, as I mentioned, on your cast on. So now I need to explain to you that with the long tail cast on, there's a little bit of planning that you have to do because what happens with the long tail cast on is that for every stitch that you cast on this needle, it's gonna eat up a little bit of this tail. So you kind of have to plan ahead. For this project, I know we are gonna be casting on 10 stitches for this pouch. So I need to kind of estimate if you look at this needle and you wrap it around with the yarn, for every stitch, I'm gonna be eating up about this much amount of yarn, which if I eyeball it is kind of like about an inch. So I need to make sure that my tail is at least 10 inches long so it can last through all 10 inches of casting on. So just eyeballing it. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So that should get me through the 10 stitches, but I always like to add a little extra to make sure I don't run out because if you run out of the tail in the middle of the cast on, then you have to start over. And then I always add a little extra even on top of that 
because when you're done with your project, you're gonna have all these loose ends, like the beginning and the end, if you see here, and you want them long enough that you're gonna be able to thread them through the tapestry needle and weave them in and hide them in your knitting. So with that, this is how long my tail is looking. And this is where now I'm gonna tie that slip knot. So same thing, wrap it around my fingers, curl my fingers towards me and through that loop that's formed behind my left hand fingers, grab that strand of yarn and pull a loop through. And that's that slip knot again. So here I have a circular needle. So I'm just gonna grab one end of my needle and stick that stitch on there. If you have two needles, because you're using straight needles, you only need one needle to do this cast on. So just grab one of your needles. Okay, so here's my circular needle. Now I'm gonna tighten the slip knot like this. This is stitch number one, and I'm gonna need 10 total. So notice that I'm not making it super tight. If you see, it's still quite loose. It needs to slip very easily on your needle. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that when we, when I show you how to knit on that next row, you wanna make sure that you have enough space to do the knitting. Cause if it's too tight, you won't be able to stick your other needle tip into that stitch in order to knit it. So that's one reason. And the other is if you cast on too tight, then what will happen with your projects is that the cast on will be all scrunched up. And once you start knitting, it'll bloom and you won't have a nice rectangular finished edge at the beginning. This isn't so important with this card pouch, but if you're gonna make a scarf or a shawl or a sweater or a blanket or something where this is gonna show, it would be nice if it could be neat looking and nice and squared off. So let me show you the long tail cast on movement now, and I will give you tips along the way on how to keep things loose. Okay, so here's the first stitch, and now you have two strands hanging down from your needle. Hold your needle in your right hand with an overhand hold. And I'm also kind of hanging onto this stitch so it won't slide off the needle. The tail, that long tail that we planned should be further away from you. And the ball of yarn can be off to the right, but the strand that's coming from it should be more towards the front. So now you have these two strands hanging down. You're gonna use your left hand and the smaller fingers are gonna grab both strands. Then your index and your thumb are gonna go in the middle and then point them outwards. Okay, let me show that again. So you have the two strands hanging down. Your little fingers of your left hand are gonna grab both strands. Then your index and your thumb are gonna go in the middle. And one strand of yarn is gonna wrap around each and you're gonna spread your hand out like this. Now, this is the actual cast on move. All the work is getting done by this needle. So this needle, your right hand needle is gonna go under the loop that's on your thumb, over the strand that's on your index finger like this, and it's gonna grab it and pull it down the same hole where your thumb is. Let go of the loop on your thumb, stick it right back in between the two strands and you kind of wiggle things around as you gently tighten your second stitch on your needle. So I've just passed on two stitches. I'm gonna show you multiple times so that this makes more sense. Okay, so you are already in position to cast on another stitch. So spread those fingers out again, use this needle tip under the loop where your thumb is, over and grab that strand that's sitting on your index finger and bring it through the hole where your thumb is. So now that's stitch number three. If it's securely on your right hand needle, let go of the loop on your thumb and stick your thumb back in. And you can see I'm kind of wiggling, wiggling, wiggling and tightening basically both strands until I get my stitch on my right hand needle looking about the same size as the other two that I cast on. So this is part of the making your cast on look really neat so that you have a very nice finished edge at the beginning of your knitting pieces. So I highly recommend you take your time when it comes to casting on. I've been knitting for many years, so I can cast on pretty quickly, but as 
somebody who's starting to knit, I would recommend you really take your time because if you can make each of these stitches look very much like the ones before it, that's how your cast on is going to be looking really nice. Okay, so I'm in position again, under the thumb, over the index strand, and pull down where the thumb hole is. And there's my fourth stitch. Let go of the thumb loop and tighten both gently until it's about the same size as the other three. And I can keep checking and looking and seeing how I like it. If I accidentally tightened this last one too much or if something went wrong with my cast on motion, I can just take it right off the needle, undo it and redo that one. So if that happens to you or if you get interrupted, also make sure you're about to start doing the cast on, excuse me, the cast on again, make sure you don't reverse which strand is coming in the front and which is in the back. You wanna keep them in the same orientation. So just take a look and see. That one naturally is in the back. This one naturally is in the front and make sure you just keep it that way. Cause if you add an extra twist, it'll show on your nice finished edge when you're done. Okay, so grabbing both again, index and thumb in the middle. And here's the cast on move, under, over and down through. So that's my fourth stitch again, since I had undone it. I'm gonna do six more to get my 10. So under, over and through, let go. Okay, so another thing I wanna point out is that as I'm tightening, using my fingers to do this, I am making sure that this back strand, which is the long tail and is the yarn that's going around the needle, that I'm not tightening it too much. It needs to be kind of loose for the reasons I explained before, because you really want to make sure all this is sliding very nicely. It'll make your next row that much easier and it'll make things look neat. So after I do the cast on move and you securely have that new stitch on there and you let go with your thumb, I'm kind of tightening both strands at the same time, but at the point where that stitch is the size I want it to be, I stop tightening against this back strand and I just kind of lean on the thumb and tighten the front strand. And the reasoning is that front strand is what's making this nice looking little corded edge that you see there. So I can tighten that to make it look nice and neat. I just don't want to tighten that back long tail piece and make that stitch too tight. So hopefully that makes sense. So now I have six stitches. I'm going to do Four more to get my 10. Seven, eight, nine, and one more. Okay, there's the 10. So if you look at it, it's looking pretty consistent and even, and that's what you're after. So now, this is where we get to start actually knitting. So this was in my right hand and I have all 10 stitches. I'm gonna flip and make this be my left hand needle. Now you'll notice that all that long tail I left, I probably overdid it. <laughs> so I have this extra. So if it bothers you, you can trim it down. So I'm just gonna cut it. So I'm leaving enough that I will be able to weave in this loose end later at the end of the project, but I'm not letting it be so long that I'm gonna confuse the tail that I'm not gonna use right now with the yarn that's coming from the ball. Because when you're knitting, it's always the ball. It's the yarn coming from the ball that you will be using to knit. Okay, so now in my left hand, I will be holding the needle and all the stitches there's 10 stitches that I will be knitting one by one and transferring each one from the left needle to the right needle as I knit them. If you have straight needles, you'll just be holding two separate straight needles. So this is where you do need your second needle. So this is how I hold the needle in my left hand. I'm gonna grab the right needle tip with my right hand. And then this is the part that's gonna take some practice if you're a beginner but you need to weave the yarn through your fingers. Now, the reason you have to do this is that the yarn coming from the ball needs a certain amount of friction to just feed through as you're knitting. And this is what creates 
your knitting tension. So knitting should be a relaxing hobby. So instead of the natural instinct, which is to knit and then kind of pull on the stitch and make it tight and then knit again and then pull, really it should be this thing where the yarn is flowing through your hand in a consistent way that will give you a nice even knitting tension. And that's where you're gonna get knitting. Your resulting knitting will be nice and even looking if you have a consistent tension. As a beginner, you probably won't. So have some patience and it's really a matter of how you're gonna hold the yarn. This is what I recommend as a starting point. And then you'll probably find your own way that feels comfortable for you as you just continue to knit and practice. So just start with this. So over your index, under your other two, over your uh, pinky of your right hand. So make sure the yarn is held that way. The right needle tip needs to be in front of the yarn for the knit stitch. And hopefully this is where everybody's at in their ready position. Okay, so this is the actual knit stitch. So you're gonna insert this needle into the first stitch on the left-hand side. It's the same hole that your left-hand needle is in. So stick your needle in there. So it goes under the left needle tip. So for a second here, I'm gonna need my left hand to kind of hold on to both things because I gotta throw the yarn with my right hand over the needle tip and then slowly grab the right hand needle with my right hand again, and draw the needle down and have the needle tip bring that yarn forward through the stitch to create a new stitch. So here's my new stitch. Now that this is safely on my right hand needle, I'm gonna slip, excuse me, I'm gonna slip the old stitch off the left hand needle. And there I've knit one stitch. So I'm gonna show you again with the next stitch because you should just keep going and not pause and tighten anything. So stick the needle in. So now you have this crossed needle. Throw the yarn up and over around the back and then grab that needle again, bring it down just enough so that you can grab the yarn and pull it through as a new loop onto your needle. That is knitting. And now you do slip it off the left-hand stitch. So I'm gonna tell you this rhyme that might be helpful to help you understand how knitting works. So it's in through the front door, around the back, peep through the window, and off jumps Jack. In through the front door, around the back, peep through the window, and off jumps Jack. So this is a rhyme that is really helpful when teaching kids to knit, but I kind of like it because it reminds people how to do the knitting. So it's a good way to learn at the beginning. And also um, another reminder that when you are just learning something, do take it slowly because it's when people try to knit fast that the mistakes can happen at the beginning. So take your time, stick the needle in, throw the yarn around the back, bring the needle down, peep through the front, the stitch is securely on there, so now you can do the off jump strack part, okay? In through the front door, around the back, peep through the window, and off jump strack. So one by one, each stitch becomes a new stitch because this yarn is getting pulled through it to become a new loop on your right hand needle. And so I will be knitting all 10 in the exact same way. Okay, one more to the very last stitch. Whoops, gotta hang on. Okay, so, so that is one whole row and you've just finished your first row of knitting. So to move on to the next row, you just flip the needles again. So the right needle becomes your left needle. And now that left needle becomes my empty right needle. And we're gonna knit the next row, just like we did. So in through the front door, around the back, 
peeps through the window and off jumps Jack. In through the front, around the back, peeps through the window and off jumps Jack. So, okay, so I do wanna point out that when I taught beginners, a lot of them feel like they're knitting rather loosely and they'll wanna stop and pull. So I encourage you not to get in that habit because that also disrupts the kind of natural flow of knitting. But ideally it really is the fact that you're holding your yarn a certain way consistently will give you this natural tension and the yarn will flow through your hand in a very consistent way. And that'll make your knitting look nice and even and you won't have to be worrying about tightening things along the way. So this is much more relaxed. Okay, so that is my second row. So if you knit every single row, which is what we're doing right now, it's called the garter stitch. So this whole pouch is done in garter stitch. And every time you do two rows, it creates one of these garter ridges. So you'll see here, there's a bunch of ridges. And all of these are created by knitting a row and knitting back in the other direction. So I wanna point out some things that beginners sometimes do by accident. So if you put your knitting down, you, you should try to always finish a row. Definitely try not to knit halfway through a row and then put it down and go do something else and then come back and try to remember which direction you were going. It's always best to finish a whole row and then move all the stitches away from the tip and put it down so that it's safe. And then when you come back, you should be able to figure out where to start because that's where the yarn is coming from. Sometimes with beginners, if the yarn happens to end up on this side of the needle, they'll see those two strands and think those are both stitches. And then they'll knit both of those and you'll end up with 11 stitches instead of 10. So that's something I wanna caution you against. And a way to kind of check yourself is if you pull down on the knitting, the yarn naturally pops back to where it should be. And also that very first stitch that you knit on every row should actually be like if you pull it out like that, it's the yarn coming from the ball of yarn. So if it's not, if you try to knit this thing underneath, which is actually the stitch from the previous row, you see it's not the ball of yarn yarn. So hopefully that'll remind you not to knit that. Okay, so I'm gonna knit one more row just to get you to a point where I can show you the next steps. So in through the front, around the back, through the, sorry, peep through the window and off jumps Jack. In through the front door, around the back, peep through the window and off jumps Jack. Another thing that can happen sometimes with beginners is they'll do the in through the front door, around the back, and then forget to do the peep through the window and just go like this. And suddenly you actually have a stitch that you didn't knit that all it did was get slipped from one needle to the other. So beware of that. So in order to undo that, you have to put your yarn back where it was and put this stitch right back on the left-hand needle so that you can knit it since it got skipped. So in through the front door, around the back, peep through the window and off jumps Jack. Okay, so this is our third row. And we're gonna knit to the end, all 10. Okay. So you'll see in the instructions for these pouches that I suggest optionally, if you'd like to use the stitch marker to mark what is the right side of your pouch. So this is the outward side that you will see when you have your finished pouch. So that's what a stitch marker can be used for. So I will just put this marker in just somewhere here on that side of my knitting. 
and that'll just remind me later which side is considered the right side and what's considered the inside or the back side, or also known as the wrong side. All right, so with this knit pouch, when you actually are making it, you're gonna need to do 59 rows of garter stitch. So that means knitting 59 rows, I've done three. So you can keep track of it with a paper and pencil. You can buy what's called a stitch counter or another way to do it is that you can count ridges. So as I mentioned before, each ridge is two rows. So you can count 29 ridges. And once you've hit the 29, you know that you're ready for the next step, which is to bind off, which is the opposite of casting on. It's how you get the stitches off your needle. But in addition, I'm gonna show you how to do this little button loop as part of the bind off. So now, here is how you do the bind off. So to bind off, you first have to get two stitches over onto your right hand needle. And since we're knitting everything for this particular pouch, I'm gonna be knitting two. So just start by knitting one, and then knitting one more, just like we've been doing. So here's the actual bind off move. You're gonna use this left needle tip to grab the first of your two stitches and drag it up and over the other stitch and off the needle. Make sure that first, sorry, the second stitch is still intact. So let it go. So now that first stitch is bound off and it's now sitting at the base of the second stitch. So it's no longer to be worked. So in order to now bind off the second stitch, I need to knit one more so I can have the two loops on the right. So knit it as we've been doing. And here's the bind off move again, grab it and drag it up and over the other stitch. So now I've bound off two stitches. I'm gonna do two more. That's number three, and that's number four. Now here's how you do this special button loop. You slip this stitch that's on the right-hand needle back to the left, just like that, and you knit it. I'm gonna do it again. Slip it right back and you knit it. And third time, slip it back and I'm knitting it. So for those of you who crochet, I basically just did a chain three using the knitting needles. Now I'm gonna finish binding off the remaining stitches on this row. So just like we did a few minutes ago, I need two loops on this side in order to do the binding off. I'm gonna knit one more. Drag that first one up and over the second one and off the needle. Do it again by knitting one. Dragging that first one up and over the second one, off the needle. And keep going until the very end. Until you're left with one last loop. Okay, so I've bound off all the stitches. And in order to safely remove my needle, what I like to do is kind of stretch that stitch out so I don't accidentally unravel anything. I'm done with the knitting needles for the moment. And you should cut the yarn, but don't cut it so close because you need a little bit of length in order to weave in those loose ends. So maybe that much. Actually, with this project, I just remembered that it is suggested that you leave a longer length because then you can use that length to help you sew up the sides. So I believe in the instructions, it says like, like a good 15 inches. So as the, just to follow the example, I would leave a longer tail so that I can use that to sew, help sew up one of the edges. I'm gonna cut it there. 
And then this is how you fasten off your knitting. That loop, you just stick your fingers through there, grab that strand of yarn that you just cut and pull it through. And now you can tighten it. And now your knitting is fastened off and it will not unravel. So now I can show you how to sew up this pouch. Okay, so here's your finished example. And this is a pouch where I've knit 59 rows and then I've done that bind off with the button loop and now it's ready to sew the edges together. I marked with this stitch marker that this is the right side, meaning the outside of this pouch. So I can remove the stitch marker for now. It served its purpose. Oops. Okay, and what you're gonna do is basically fold this in half. And we're going to sew up both sides to create this pouch. So this is where my yarn needle comes into play. And this long tail that I left will be easy enough to use to sew up this side. So here's my trick for threading yarn through one of these yarn needles. So I lay the yarn, just a little tail of it on my finger. I take the skinny end of my yarn needle and lay it on top. I fold it over like that. And then I punch it really hard. So then after I remove my needle, that pinched part, I let it peek up through my finger. And I can usually shove that pinched part right into the eye of the needle. I can show you again. So you just lay it down, use the skinny part, fold it over, and then pinch it hard, remove the needle, and then let that folded part peek through and shove it through the eye of the needle. And that works pretty well for me. Okay, so now I'm gonna do what's called a whip stitch to sew, show you how to sew the edge of the pouch. So it's just like sewing a whip stitch if you are somebody that sews. There are many different ways to sew things together. This is what I find works with these pouches. Okay, so basically, if you look at the edge of this, I'm gonna try my best to match up these nubs. So it's kind of the, each, each ridge ends in kind of a nubby part. And I'm gonna try to match it up one by one so that I'm sewing this up evenly. So just to get started, I'm gonna bring it from one side to the other. Okay, so here's that first ridge. So I'm gonna figure out to grab that. And then on the other side, grab a little bit. And I'm only picking out one strand. So if you can see, I'm doing that. I'm gonna pull it through. And then move on to the next ridges and try to do the same thing. So there and there. And pull it through. And then kind of see where the next set of ridges are. It looks like that to me. And there and pull it through. And then I'm gonna do this all the way down to the very end on this end, this edge. And I'll have to attach a new strand of yarn to do the same on this other side. And that's how you sew up the sides of the pouch. After you're done sewing this all the way down, you are gonna to need to weave in this loose end. So let me actually just show you how to do that in general using this loose end. So I'm gonna thread that through. And the idea of weaving in loose ends is basically just a way to hide all these ends, whether it's the beginning or the ending of when you stop knitting, or maybe you change colors, you had to change a ball of yarn, you could end up with a lot of loose ends depending on what the project is. And then to do the proper finishing, you need to try to hide these inside your knitting 
So it won't come undone and you don't want it to show. So this is how I recommend doing it in this example. Okay, so that's the outside of your pouch. So I'm gonna go on the inside. I've threaded it. So depending on what kind of fabric you've ended up with, there might be different places to hide this. So garter stitch tends to have, well, I know it does have these ridges and it kind of has these valleys in between. So I like to hide these loose ends in those areas because I feel like they don't show as much. So let me just show you what I mean. So also when I'm weaving in a loose end, I'm splitting the yarn as I go. So if you can see where I'm sticking the needle, each of well, the yarn kind of has a couple different threads that are just twisted together and I'm only picking up part of it. So I'm gonna stick my needle in and pick up only part of each strand along the way here, about an inch or so. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of check myself. If I flip it over to the right side, if I can see the needle too clearly, then I'm not doing a very good job hiding this thread. So I don't really see my needle, so I think I'm doing okay. So I'm gonna pull it through now. So I'm not gonna pull it too tight. Okay, and then you can do a back stitch and go forward and finish doing the same thing. I like to do this because sometimes, depending on the yarn, if it's silky, uh, even when you take care and weave in these loose ends, it can come undone and then it can start poking out and make your knitting not look very nice. Okay, so that's an example of how I weave in a loose end and then I trim it. And there on the right hand side, you should see no evidence of that loose end. All right, so now let me try to quickly show you how to sew on the button. Mainly, I just wanna show you how to secure the sewing thread when you're sewing a button on a knit fabric. So this is the way I tie a knot. This is a sewing thread that's been doubled. So I licked my finger and I'm gonna wrap it around just like that and then roll it off my finger and grab it and pull the thread and that creates a knot. That's one way to do it. That's just the way I learned when I was little, but there are other ways to knot your thread. And then this is just the trick that I wanted to show you. The button should be placed about a half inch down from the edge. So just about there. So on the back side, first I need to secure the thread. So what I'm gonna do is position it about where the button needs to be. I'm just grabbing at the surface some of this knit fabric. I'm gonna pull the needle through, but instead of just pulling it through and hoping that this knot is big enough not to go through my knitting, I'm gonna stick my needle between the two strands. So it's gonna loop like that. That way this is secure and I know my sewing thread will not pull through. And then at this point I will sew on this button just like you would sew on a button that's come loose off a shirt. So I'm not gonna show you that because I think that's just basic sewing. Okay, so those are the steps, all the steps to make this pouch. Now in our remaining time, I wanna quickly show you some of the techniques that I can touch on for these other pouches. So in order to do this one, you have to learn how to do what's called the purl stitch because all we've, all I've shown you so far is knitting every row. Purling is the opposite of the knit stitch in a lot of ways. And it's what will give you this kind of fabric. So you'll see a garter is all, all the ridges 
And then this is more typically what you see with sweaters. There's a smooth knit side with a little V-like stitches. And that is called a stockinette stitch. And that is achieved by knitting a whole row and then purling a whole row and then alternating back and forth. So here's a little example of what stockinette stitch looks like. So I've been knitting and purling and alternating. So real quickly, I just wanna show you how to do the purl stitch. So you kind of hold everything the same way. With knitting, the yarn is behind the needle. With purl, the yarn's gonna be in front of the needle. With knitting, you stuck your needle in from left to right. With purl, you're gonna stitch your needle in from right to left and it's gonna be on top of this left-hand needle. So it goes like this, you stick it in like that. You wrap the yarn around the front needle and then you draw it back down and it's gonna peek out and the stitch is gonna come out the back. That is called a purl stitch. So I would be purling every stitch on this row. So right to left instead, wrap it around the front and the stitch comes out the back. So this is something that's good to learn after you learn to do knitting and then you learn to do purling. And if you can alternate them row for row, then you can do fabrics like this, which is called a stockinette stitch. Okay. And then I wanna quickly show you, this is the example of the cable one. So before it's been assembled. So all that is, is that you, these eight stitches that are in the middle, you're gonna do them in a different order. So let me just show you that real quick and then it'll be time for Q&A. Okay, so here's the cable. So it's a combination of knit and purl stitches on the same row. So that's something that's for more advanced knitters. So here there's four purl stitches. which is what I just showed you. And then here's a cable needle. And I'm gonna do slip four stitches on there. So they get put on hold and they're just sitting in the back. And I'm gonna not work them. I'm gonna knit four. One, two, three, four. And now I'm gonna go back and knit the four that were on the cable needle. I just wanted to quickly show you a simple cable twist. And I know it's gonna be time now here for questions. Okay, so then there's your twist. And I'm gonna knit the four and give you one last look. Okay, so there you go. That's a cable twist. Okay. Emily, I'm ready for questions if you are. <laughs> Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Um, we are ready for questions. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, so helpful. I'm gonna watch the recording for sure and practice it on my own time, but that's a reminder for anybody um, to who needs to rewatch this, we will have a recap and recording on our blog page within a few days at meetup.com slash blog. So little plug there. Um, so a few stitching questions. Lisa said, I got lost at cast on very early on. Can you please go over that uh, very slowly? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so let me show you again. Okay, so first you do that slip knot. So you wrap it over your fingers. And I'm going to curl my fingers. And through that hole, grab the strand and pull. And that's the slip knot. Okay, so that was the first stitch. And it goes on your needle. 
I'm going to use a bigger needle. Just maybe that'll help. Okay. Okay. So there's two strands of yarn, the tail, which is going to be further away from me and the yarn that's coming from the ball. That's closer to me. Both are hanging down using my left hand to grab both strands. Index and thumb go between the two strands, just like that. And then you just point them out. So the cast on is this. You use this needle tip, grab the front strand where your thumb is, like that. And then you move until you can grab the strand of yarn that's on your index finger just like if you had a hook, you're trying to grab it and then bring it down where your thumb is. And then you let go of the loop on your thumb, stick it back between the two and tighten. Another way to think about this that might be helpful is that this needle tip, you're basically just trying to open up this loop. So hopefully you can see it. You're trying to use it to open up this loop that's on your thumb in order to grab that strand, that other strand of yarn through it. So visually, sometimes that helps people open up that big loop in order to grab that strand through. And then you let go. So hopefully that helped a little bit. Yeah, I think that was helpful. Thank you for doing that. Um, Anonymous asked, how do you pick up a drop stitch? Yeah, okay, well, that totally depends on what you dropped. But let me see if I can show you. So, I mean, the easiest is if you were doing knitting and purling the stock knit stitch. Because if you happen to say drop, if you had dropped this stitch and it came unraveled a row or two, ideally you catch it in time that you see the loop. And then you would need a crochet hook, which I don't have handy right this second. But you can use your needles too. So make sure you grab that loop. And with crochet, it could be easier because you would take that strand and get it back in through that loop. I'm just going to do it with my fingers. So pull that strand through that loop and work your way back up the ladder. Okay, so that's how you would save that one. It's a little harder with garter stitch, so I'm not sure that's something I can easily show you today. Thank you. Um, the next person asked, Nora, she asked, or they asked, um, how can you tell which is the front side of the garter stitch? Yes, so the way I can tell is because I know what it looks like in terms of the cast on. So with the long tail cast on, here, let me get rid of this stitch marker. Okay, with the long tail cast on, what I like is that one side has this nice kind of corded edge going. I always consider that the right side of my work. And so for generally in my patterns, I consider that the right side. And that's why in the instructions for this pouch, I recommend if you can to use your stitch marker and mark that as your right side. That way, when you get past your you know 59 rows, you can still figure out which is your right side. So that's a nice corded edge. If you look at the back side, of the cast on, that's what it looks like, which to me is not as nice looking. So that's what I consider the wrong side. So you can visually look at that if you use the long tail cast on method, or you can use a stitch marker. 
So that's what I recommend. Thank you. Um, we have another question from Anonymous. If you have 150 stitches to start your project, do you still use the long cast on? And if so, how long do you leave? Yes, I do. And so I tend to leave a really long tail. So what I mentioned at the beginning about kind of eyeballing it, that's pretty much what I do. So I will look at, let me get the yarn. So let's say this is the needle size I'm using. I'll kind of look at how much yarn is needed to get each stitch around the needle. You know, if, if I think that's one, then I'm gonna say, okay, then to me, 10, you know, looks like this. And then I'm gonna go like that 15 times to get 150. And then I will add extra just to be safe. Maybe add, you know, a good six or even 10 inches to be safe and then tie my slip knot there in order to accommodate 150 stitches or something that much. That is a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, we'll take one last question. Crystal asked, can you please show the button loop stitch again? Oh. Okay. Do we have time for me to show it? Um, maybe very quickly. Okay. Here, let me see if I, um, yeah, let me get my mini needle. Because I have to undo this in order to... Okay, so this button loop method that I used for this pouch was just part of the binding off. Okay, so if you recall, I had bound off four stitches and now all I did was use a left-hand needle and slip from the front the stitch back onto the left and then treat it just like it was the next stitch and knit it as you would knit any stitch. So that's the move and I did it three times. So slip it back, knit it. And then one more time, slip it back and knit it. And then continue to bind off as, as I showed you before and there you'll have that button. Perfect. That was a great quick little demo. Thank you. <laughs> um, so before we go, I am just going to share in your, the chat your resources um, so people can keep up with you and follow you on social media. So I have your website, Instagram, Pinterest, um, your web, uh, the meetup instructions you have on there. Um, okay. so I, if you want to add a little bit more to that, um, feel free to share. Oh, okay. Yes, please um, go to the sweaterwave.com meetup link, and that's where you'll find a download link for the instructions to these pouches, as well as a special coupon for attending this meetup. And I thank you awesome. so that you can try out my patterns. Thank you. And uh, one last thing before we go, we're just going to share a few quick slides for the audience. All right, so uh, Meetup is now on TikTok. If you haven't checked us out yet, please follow us um, at Meetup on TikTok. We post really fun and engaging content on there and you won't wanna miss out on it. And we also have a podcast, Keep Connected with Meetup CEO, David Siegel. David talks with Meetup organizers as well as thought leaders in community and connection. Um, you can scan this QR code to give it a listen. And finally, as a reminder, you can view a recap of this event in a few days on our Community Matters blog at meetup.com slash blog. So thank you again, everybody, for joining us. I hope this was helpful. I know it was helpful for me. And thank you, Catherine, for everything and for sharing your tips with us. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Have a great day, evening, whatever time it is for you. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you.